small cell is, has been an incredibly, uh, you know, recalcitrant disease, especially if you have extensive stage disease. Um, you know, we've had no um, advances beyond chemotherapy for the last, um, I don't know, forever. Um, and um, uh, Empower 133 was, uh, um, I think, the first uh, positive trial, uh, phase three trial in small cell. It was published in the New England Journal. Uh, Leora is the first author. So, Leora, tell us about Empower 133 since it's your trial. Sure. So, you know, there, there are a lot of people out there who are saying it's only a two-month benefit, but, you know, it is a positive study. And so it was a randomized phase three trial um, looking at carboplatinum and etoposide. Importantly, didn't have cisplatinum, which is a big difference between the Empower study and Caspian, um, with or without atezolizumab. Um, and while response rate was not improved, it's hard to improve on an almost 70% response rate, there was an improvement in progression-free survival and more importantly, an improvement in overall survival um, for patients treated um, with the uh, carboetoposide and atezolizumab. And then last year, um, we had a study that pretty much mirrored that with the pdl one inhibitor Dervalumab, the Caspian trial, that looked at carboetoposide or cisetoposide with or without Dervalumab. And again, another positive study, uh, significant improvement in with uh, extensive stage small cell. And um, Jacob, what do you think? Is it great or is it so-so? Well, I'll say, I mean, there's widespread enthusiasm about this and it's been hailed as uh, really the first advance in decades in small cell lung cancer. Um, I'll say, I mean, I do think it is practice changing. I do think this is the new first line therapy. I have a little bit of a different impression as to why. It, uh, I'll, I'll point out that in both trials, very few patients who were in the control arm ever got a checkpoint inhibitor. So in some ways, this really showed us uh, that the checkpoint inhibitors work for, for a portion of these patients, which I think we already knew. Um, I will also point out that although people say that the median progression-free survival is only a month and overall survival only two months, that's kind of not the point. Um, because it, when you look out at the tail, there's, a, there's a, a, a percentage of patients that are really having long-term durable responses, and that is incredibly meaningful. So again, to my analogy earlier, I mean, these checkpoint inhibitors are swinging for the fences. It really is swinging for a home run, and when you connect, we see amazing responses and durable responses in this very difficult-to-treat population. Uh, my impression on using it first line is a little different in, in that the thing is that most patients don't really tend to get a, a great response from the checkpoint inhibitor alone. And if you're saving it only for second line, you're now having the majority of patients getting a drug that ends up not really being effective to try and catch those who it is very effective. And in doing so, you lose the opportunity for other treatment options. So I, I do think it's very important. I, I think it's meaningful to use it in the frontline setting. I think it showed that these drugs really do work for um, probably more like 10 to 20 percent of patients that really get very meaningful benefit uh, from these drugs and when they work it is I, I mean it's a huge advance for those individuals over what was previously available in small cell lung cancer. But, but I don't think that it's only that. I think that there must be some synergy because if you look at the other the second line studies that have been done um, so particularly, there was a study um, that randomized patients who had completed platinum etoposide for extensive stage small cell to nivolumab, nivolumab ipilimumab, or placebo, okay? And nivolumab ipilimumab didn't beat placebo. So I think that these drugs do have some benefit. We don't know for whom it is, but the fact that we're seeing now two large phase three studies showing that the addition of a PDL one inhibitor notably not a PD-1 inhibitor, not pembrolizumab, uh, to chemotherapy and extensive stage small cell led to an improvement in overall survival. The improvement is modest, but as everyone said, this is the only improvement we've had for over 20 years. So I think that this is a very meaningful improvement, and I think that it's important for us to incorporate it frontline. And I do suspect here that there's more synergy going on than it is from just exposure to the drug. That, that same study that you were referring to, Josh, uh, Checkmate 451, also showed that patients who got 
nivolumab less than five weeks after completing chemotherapy had a median overall survival of 12 months compared to nine months for the patients getting nevo, ipi, or placebo. So again, it's that, not that I would advocate doing chemo followed by nevo less than five weeks later, it does point to that synergy giving the checkpoint inhibitor upfront with chemotherapy early. At the same time, though, we do see differences later out in the curve, in the tail of those curves, speaking to the fact that it probably is a subset of patients. And when you're talking about median for a drug that affects a subset, you may lose that in that median versus the subset that's really benefiting. And, and you know, for the checkpoint inhibitors, it's probably more meaningful to look at the one-year progression-free survival as opposed to the median progression-free survival. So, Leora, um, you know, we have Empire 133, we have Caspian, differences, similarities in trial, how you kind of compare the two trials as you go forward? So, um, me put Tim out of work a little bit with the trials, you know, the, the one difference, so with Caspian, patients could have had six cycles of chemo if they were in the chemo alone arm. Um, whereas in an, the Empower study, both arms had four cycles, and that was a bit of an argument. Maybe that was the difference, but clearly it's not the difference. Also in the Caspian, the patients did not necessarily have whole brain radiation if they were getting checkpoint inhibitor therapy. Now, many of us had moved away from that practice anyway in patients with extensive stage disease where we're surveying their brain rather than going on to doing um, whole brain radiation or PCI, I should say, as these patients weren't with brain meds. So um, those were sort of the main differences. So I, I stop at four cycles of chemo. I did, I was not, you know, I used to give six if patients were still responding. Um, and the Caspian data shows me that I think that that's fine to do because those patients did stop at four cycles in their Develamab arm. And the CNS surveillance is something that we're doing more and more where we're just scanning patients, CNS every three to six months um, in patients where we're not treating their brain.